God First Sunland Apple IPTV Entertainment. The best makeup artist candy too. 42395125. You don't even know how very special you are. You Every Friday evening Sabbath begins at 6.30 p.m. and ends Saturday evening at 6.30 p.m. It's funny that I'm sitting here in this chair because this is literally my Sabbath routine. So in the morning, my husband and my son, they go to synagogue. I sleep in a little bit and so does Nora. Then we eat lunch together as a family. Right here at this dining room table. And then we read all afternoon. Right now I'm reading this book called Crush. It's part of the Crave series. It's about vampires and werewolves and witches, all that good stuff. And then before Sabbath is over, my husband and son go back to synagogue two more times. There are three different times for prayer every single day, not just on Sabbath every day, but on Sabbath they actually go to synagogue for it. Where during the week, my husband sometimes goes to synagogue and sometimes prays at home. Sometimes the kids have friends over, sometimes we play board games, and that's really it. It's a day of rest. It is a day for relaxation. And of course, lots of praying to God as well. Black churches and black pastors who live a lavish life on behalf of the people and they're not giving back to their community. He's referring to Bishop Wayne T. Jackson, the wealthy pastor that welcomed Donald Trump, drives a Rolls Royce and lives in a mansion. Zeke was there for the offering Saturday. When they started the offering at a thousand dollars. His tithes. Let's find out if it lines up with what your church is doing on a Sunday afternoon. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all. Thou, thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. Of thy what? Of thy seed. You didn't say money? Of your Tithing seed. Tithing wasn't even being done in the earth. It wasn't until church. they figured, man, we could pimp the people. They read Numbers 18, like, you know what? We can flip this and get paid. More money, more money, more money. God will find you. Sunland Apple IPTV Entertainment Perfected Faces Done by Candy. See, I didn't find God in the church. In fact, I didn't find God at all. He found me. He met me in a place where I was so broken I couldn't get up. And when you're loved like that, it will shock you. Whoever needs to hear this, listen now. God did not bring you this far to leave you. He did not bring you this far to... The scripture says that he that started a good work, a good work, he starts a good work, he's faithful to see it through till the end. The work that the Lord has started, has started in you is a good work. And he will surely see it through to the end. He, said, he says, it makes all things work together for good. For those that love, love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. His purpose. You did not find God. Contrary to, um, you know, to to the to the to the way it is explained today that oh i found god i found god you did not find god god was not lost you was you was lost god found you and so if he finds you he is big enough strong and strong enough and able enough to secure you and to keep you you've got to believe that in the book of matthews 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 44, it says, No one can come to you unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. Christ is saying that if the Father did not send you, if the Father did not um, send you to him, you will not be able to know him. So God found you. So you've got to believe that if he found you and he's brought you this far, then he's faithful enough, he's able enough, and he's more than willing to see you through to the very end because he does a good work. He doesn't he doesn't um, do unfinished business. No. The Lord finishes his work perfectly. The book of Ephesians 2 verses uh, 10 says that um, we are God's masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. Listen to these words. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us a long time ago. So before you were even born, there was a preparation for you. You've got to believe that because it's true. Before you even says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I'd set you apart. Right? So there's a preparation for you. There's a plan for you. There's a purpose for you. There's a, there's a path for you. And, and you are a masterpiece that is going through to perfection. You will be perfected. You're going through a process that is going to take you to perfection. The Lord did not bring you this far to me. God wants to be pursued. He's a relational God. He's, he's a jealous God. He wants your heart. He wants your devotion. He wants your passion. In fact, he gives us an incredible promise in, in Jeremiah 29 verse 13. He says this, God says, you will seek me. And what happens when you seek me? When you seek me, he says, you'll find me. It's a promise. If you pursue God, he will reveal himself to you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, God says, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. When you draw near to him, when you pursue him, when you crave him, when you hunger for him, God loves to be pursued and he loves to reveal himself to you. To speak to people about a peck. So when you look at a peck, it has the silver spring in the center. Yes. A peck cannot function without the silver spring in the center. If I remove the silver spring in the center, it will be just two pieces of planks that mean nothing. Same yeah. thing with your life. If I remove God at the center of your heart, you'll be a meaningless person. You wouldn't know your purpose. You wouldn't know your calling. You wouldn't know who you are. Number two, when you hang clothes on a line, why do you put a peg? You put a peg so that in back a zinga or a zinga goes. Same thing with your life. Why do you receive God in your life? You receive God so that you don't fall into depression, anger, anxiety, bitterness, jealousy. That is why you need God in your life so that you can be who you are and know your identity and purpose. Number three, if I remove the clothes from the pegs, so that is why it's very important to stick on to the Lord. Number four, Apex does not discriminate Sisley Rad. It doesn't matter whether you are rich, whether you are poor, whether you are filthy, whether you are dirty. Apex job is to hold you back. It does not matter who you are. Apex is going to hold you. Isn't this is the same thing that God says? Come as you are. It doesn't matter how broken. It doesn't matter what happened in your life. God is saying that just come as you are. Right now, during this lockdown, there's somebody that's broken. It's saying that. I have no future. There's no hope. But I want to tell you, God is saying, come as you are. And the word fear, says Lirato, the word fear, this word, fear, it has two meanings for me, says Lirato. It says, first meanings from the enemy. And people will say, forget everything and run away from the promises that God has for you. It's saying forget. But I want you to turn it around today. I don't care what situation you're facing today. Turn it around. Face everything and rise i don't care what situation you've been through a lot of people they might have thrown stones dogs do not bark at a car that stands still but dogs bark at a car that's moving so what i'm telling you run hustle it's difficult today i'm an author my friends when i shut my Wish you could trade eyes with me Cause There's complexities in complexion But your skin is glow like diamonds
Dig me like the earth, you be giving birth To everything alive, baby, know your worth I love everything about you from your nappy curls To every single curve, your body natural Same skin that was broken, me the same skin taking over Most things are the focus, you But when you're in the room, they know Story. Keep dancing, they can't control you They watch and they all adore 